Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Douse. Uh, on this video I'm going to talk about solving for two unknown variables whenever we have similar triangle problems. Uh, now this says part three. Uh, I've got many videos on similar triangles. Go to my website dousehouse.com, look under geometry lessons and you can find these titles. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to move on and start solving this, uh, this, this kind of problem. Uh, it says example one, triangle JKL is similar to triangle PQR. Find X and Y. Uh, and so keep in mind, we know that these triangles are similar. Uh, and so we know these triangles automatically have these two characteristics. We know that corresponding angles are congruent. We know that corresponding sides are proportional. Uh, and so we don't need to check if they're similar. We already know they are. Uh, and so we need to figure out what x and y is. Well, x is this side length and y is this side length here. So we're trying to figure out what are these lengths of these sides. Uh, now, since we're focusing on sides here, we're going to use this characteristic. Corresponding sides are proportional to end up setting up proportions for x and also for y. Uh, and when we set up these proportions, uh, we can solve the, um, the missing sides. Uh, now, now keep in mind here, there's a lot of numbers going on here. Uh, the triangles have been flipped around and so there's a lot of complexities about this problem and, and I'm going to show you how I get around those complexities and make these problems a lot easier. Uh, but before we go any further, uh, if you haven't seen my, my videos before this one, I need to talk to you about how to set up the proportions. Uh, if you have two unknown variables, since we have two unknown variables, we're going to have to end up setting up two proportions. And so if you set up your proportions in this way that I'm organizing it right now, uh, you shouldn't have any problem solving these problems. Uh, and so what I do is I always compare the small triangle to the big triangle. Uh, you can do big triangle over small triangle. Do whatever your teacher tells you to, but this is what I do. And if I do small triangle over big triangle, the numbers on top are coming from the same triangle. So they'd both be coming from the small triangle versus the numbers on the bottom are coming from the big triangle. And so we're organizing the numbers from the small triangle are on top, the numbers from the small triangle on the bottom. And then up and, and down from each other, these ratios uh, are going to be uh, comparing corresponding sides. Uh, and so likewise over here. And so again, since we have two unknown variables, we need to set up two proportions. And so we're going to have a little bit extra work to do here versus solving for one unknown variable. Uh, and there is a couple tricks to this that you want to pay attention to. Uh, and so let's just solve this problem. Uh, it says triangle JKL is similar to triangle PQR. Find X and Y. Uh, and so hmm, let's start solving for, for X. Let's just say we're going to solve for X here. And so I'm focusing on X right now. Now I'm going to have to set up my proportions, small over big. That's what I do, small over big. Uh, and so, hmm, since I am solving for X, I need to plug in X into this proportion. Uh, but I have a problem here. I need to figure out which sides correspond with each other. And it's not so easy to tell. This triangle has been flipped around. You don't want to guess here. I'm going to use the statement here to help me out. I know that J comes first and P comes first. So I know that angle J and angle P are going to be congruent to each other. Uh, K and Q come second. So I know that angle K and angle Q is going to have uh, the same number of arcs because these uh, angles are corresponding and are congruent to each other. L and R come third. And so I know that these angles are going to be congruent to each other. And, and with that, we can now figure out which sides correspond to each other. And I'll explain that right here. If I'm going to solve for X, I need to use X. And so what side corresponds with X? Well, I have two, tick, uh, sorry, two arcs here. I've got two arcs here. And so X and 25 correspond to each other, again, because they're opposite the, the same angle measure. And so X is the small triangle. 25 is on the big triangle. So X is going to go on top, whereas 25 is going to go on the bottom. Uh, and so I'm, I'm getting closer and closer to being there. Now I need to compare another set of co corresponding sides. And so I'm going to look around here. If I look at opposite J, uh, that's one arc. I have two. If I look opposite P, I have Y, which, uh, again, they're opposite the same angle measure. And so if I want to plug these in, we're going to see what happens here. Two is small. Y is big. Um, I have a problem here. I, in a proportion, you can have only one unknown. Since I've got two unknowns here, I can't set it up this way. And so I need to, I need to look at the other sides that I have here. And so the last uh, what we, uh, group of sides here, opposite the three arcs, is the six. Opposite the three arcs here is the 15. Six is small. 15 is big. Ah, now I have only one unknown. And so now I can solve this problem. So I'm just going to cross multiply here. Uh, X times 15 is 15 X. Uh, 25 times 6. And then let's keep going here. Uh, 15 X 
equals 150. To isolate the x, I need to divide by 15 here. And I get x is equal to 10. And so right now, I know that x is 10. And if you're not quite sure if that's right, you can always double check it by plugging in the number that you found in for x. Uh, 10 times 15 is 150. And 25 times 6 is 150. And again, since these balance out, 150 is equal to 150, I know 10 has to be the right answer. And so I have figured out what x is. I still need to go with y. And so uh, I know this is a lot of work here, uh, but I'm going to try and squeeze this one in. So over here, let me draw a line here to separate these two. Uh, I'm going to focus and I'm going to try and solve for y on this side. And so I'm going to do small over big, like I did earlier, and then set up a proportion. Uh, now I'm solving for y, and so I need to have y in this proportion. Uh, if I look here, y and 2 are the corresponding sides. y is on the big triangle, so y is on the bottom in this case, and 2 is going to be on the top. Uh, now, you don't want to use the variable that you just solved for. What if somehow we got x is not 10, and, and you got it wrong? Uh, if Let's say we got the wrong answer here, and I plug in 10 for x. Uh, that'd be a problem here. So again, 10 over 25, I could do 20, 10 over 25 here. This is small over big. Uh, but again, we're not, I'm, I'm very certain it's right. Uh, but what if you're not quite certain it's right? You don't want to plug in numbers that you just solved for. I'm going to end up using the same ratio that I had from before. I know that 6 and 15, they came with a problem, the 6 and 15. So I'm going to plug in those numbers again. And so on these problems, these corresponding sides here, I end up using the same ratio. This is 6 over 15 here, so I'm going to put 6 over 15 here. And then so I would plug in x on this side and the, and the other uh, corresponding side, I would plug in y here and the corresponding side to y. And that's what I've done here. So these match up. That should happen for you. Again, it just guarantees that things are going to go better here. And so now that I've got this set up here, I can cross multiply 2 times 15 equals y times 6, which is 6y. 2 times 15 is 30 equals 6y. Divide both sides by 6 to isolate the y, and I have y is equal to 5. And so if I plug 5 in here for the y, 2 times 15 is 30, 5 times 6 is 30, and since these equal each other, I know this has to be correct. So I know right now that y is 5. Anyways, I hope this helps you understand how to solve uh, similar triangle problems when you have two unknowns, and I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.